be daring, baby, dance the night away. I let my head down if I want. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we are jumping right in. I'm gonna be sharing how I made a lot of the decorations for Penelope's party and we're starting with this Barbie box. So this is the box I use. My friend got it from Home Depot for free um, and it's about four feet high. The first thing I did is I went ahead and measured all around it to do all the borders. So I just did, I'll tell you the measurements later on. Um, but I just went ahead and did all the markings so I could then cut it. For the box, what you just saw me doing here is I did the framing. Um, this line you can't see. There you go. You can see better. For where I know where I have to cut. So I did five inches from top to bottom. And then on the sides, I had done five inches, but I thought it was better if they were thinner. So I did three inches. So I did that. And now I'm going to do a line diagonal like this because the Barbie will be down here. So that's all I'm gonna do and then tomorrow I will cut it out. Okay, so here's a picture of P so you guys see it for size reference. Um, but once I had my markings, I just grabbed a box cutter and I carefully just followed the line all the way through until I cut all the pieces off. Okay, so here's the box all cut out. The angle down there, you see it it's perfect so i feel like now i could wrap it so i'm going to try to figure out how i'm going to do that so once i have my box cut and ready to go as you can see this duct tape i just used in the corners to help it keep its shape it was also a little bit messed up so that's why we used um the duct tape to kind of like keep it together and make it nice and more smooth on the edges so here's my thinking i'm gonna go all around and then this part could just fold in and then i'll do the inside separately is what i'm thinking will be best i also have this uh balloon let me show you i also have this balloon glue dots uh which i don't think i'll be using for the garland like all of them so i'm gonna put place some so the paper stays in place okay so i figured this was the easiest way to wrap this box and it actually turned out to be super simple um so once i had my paper exactly where i wanted it i used the glue dot i feel like the glue dots were key for this project it just saved a lot of time and it helped keep the paper where it needed to be so it helped all the edges and everything look more smooth so I just went ahead and put it kind of like in the corners and in the middle before I started taping things down Okay, so once I had my glue dots in place, I just went ahead and started with the bottom. And one tip I gotta give you is just follow the paper. If it folds away and you see that it's a comfortable fold and it's not crinkled or anything, just follow those folding lines. Um, if it feels like it's just bulging or the paper's getting messed up, just don't fold it that way because it's probably not the right way. But as you could tell here, I just kind of folded it like if you were wrapping a Christmas gift and then just secured it with some tape. And once I was done with that, I went ahead and folded the little edge that I had on the um, smaller end or not the front, but the back end. Um, and I secured it with glue dots before I secured it with tape. Okay, so once you secure the bottom and the side, you're gonna go ahead and turn your box, how you see me doing here, keeping the paper straight, and you're just gonna let the paper slide through the top and the other side of the box, and you're gonna follow the same steps that I just showed you before. You're gonna secure your paper with the glue dots, and then you're gonna fold over the edges, and then turn the box once again to do the other side. Guys, I'm not the greatest with tutorials and this was really hard to explain, so I hope the video speaks for itself. I try to get close up so you guys could get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, but if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to help you out. Okay, so here you get a better look of what I did with the edges. Don't worry about the inside, you're gonna go ahead and do that later on. So it doesn't really matter how you fold the edges or how big or small they are, um, you will cover that up later on. Okay, so once the top and both sides are covered, you're gonna turn your box around, cut the paper off and finish it off how you did the other side. So this is what it looks like. It is wrapped all around. Now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here. Either fold it, cut it, I'm not sure. So I'm going to start with the bottom. That I could just cut. 
um, and fold it in. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll worry about the top. Okay, so I didn't realize my camera wasn't recording, but all I did is I found the corner of the box and then I just went ahead and cut a line straight through but diagonal so I could make the corners fold nicely and smooth without leaving any marks on the front of the box. So for the top, again, I did the diagonal cut in for the sides, but as you could see all the way at the top, there's extra paper, so you definitely have to fold it. All I could say here is again, just follow that rule. Follow the groove of the paper wherever it folds, just make sure you get that fold nice and just very tight and clean. So I just keep pressing it down, made sure it was nice and tucked in the corners and everything looks nice and smooth. So pretty much how you wrap a present, that's what you wanna do up here. Okay, so I definitely think it sounds a lot harder than it looks, but I hope you guys could see this from the video. Um, it's actually very simple. I just went ahead and cut off the extra material. And once you have it, you're gonna wanna fold it back and secure it with tape. The same as the sides, I used again the glue dots and then I secured it extra with some packing tape. So here you could see a better look on how I cut it. Uh, when I said I cut it in an angle, it's just better to fold and it will fold smoother when you cut in an angle than, as, than if you were to cut it straight, if that makes any sense. So now for the bottom part that was left uncovered, um, I just went ahead and cut a piece of paper that will cover that. I wasn't too worried about it because I know the Barbie sign will be there, so it would just cover this part. So don't put too much thought into it. Just cut a piece of paper straight um, just to cover the edges and tape it down at uh, the bottom and on the inside of the box. And again, I just went ahead and secured the sides with some glue dots just because I didn't want to put any tape on the outside. So I just made sure I secured it with some glue dots and then I went ahead and taped it in the inside. Okay guys, last stretch. I want to pretty much cover the sides for pictures so they don't show like that. So what I'm doing is measuring how big the sides are by putting the paper underneath one of the sides and then I'm just gonna cut there and just kind of like, you know, tape it to the inside. But I figured this was the easiest way to measure how thick I needed this to be. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so this is definitely a little hack so you don't have to take our ruler and do any measurements um, and this is to cover the inside of the box so the reason why you want to cover the sides and the bottom is because this is a picture prop so if you were taking pictures you will be able to see the sides the top you could leave just like that but the sides you would be able to see the cardboard so you want to make sure that you just cover that so all I did was as you could tell, measure a piece of paper, make sure it fit in there. I glued it or taped it with packing tape at the top and then I used the glue dots to make sure I secured it on the sides. Okay, and then I went ahead with the leftover paper that I had from cutting the side. I just used it at the bottom to cover the outer edge of the box just in case it showed in the pictures i don't think it did but i just wanted to make sure um, you didn't see the cardboard there then i just went ahead and did the same thing on the other side so here is the box this is the final product i did the inside i think it looks great um for my first box and i just think it's perfect <laughs> not perfect but like it's a fourth birthday it's family like it's not a big deal i think it's good enough guys so i just put the barbie sign my friend made this for me um amazing turned out perfectly the measurements were perfect so the barbie sign is up and now i'm going to put some of this ribbon i had this here at home but i'm gonna go ahead and do a little um frame around the whole box just to make it a little bit more fancy Okay, so this step is completely optional, but it did take my box from cute to fabulous, like Penelope says. Um, and I only did it because I had this at home, so you definitely don't need to do this, but it does make it so much cuter. And then for the back of the box, I think the simplest thing to do is to add one of these fringe curtains. They're super inexpensive and it gives it a nice look. If you're gonna have your box against the wall, this is the perfect thing to use. If not, you could always use cardboard, wrap it in the 
same paper that you did the box or different paper and just kind of like tape it to the back but this was the easiest way and i just went ahead and cut off the excess um the excess fringes that i had at the end okay and here is the way it turned out i absolutely love it it looks so so good all right guys so the next thing that i am doing for penelope's birthday is a balloon garland i started uh, uh blowing some balloons last night just to try it out but i'm gonna share um how i make it the first thing you want to do from what i saw from <laughs> youtube videos and what people told me is you want to blow up all your balloons you want to try to make them round not oval so round like this mm -hmm. so what you do is you fill them up to wherever you have to and then you press them against your chest and let some air out until it gets like nice and round but um this balloon garland i'm gonna link it down below it came with everything it came with all different size balloons that you need it comes with ribbon and it also comes with this uh balloon tape where you could do a garland because it has these holes i'll show you the process once i put it together for now i am just blowing up all the balloons uh we did get an electric um balloon blower electric pump uh, because everyone said it was so much easier and that one was $20 and it's perfect because I'm sure I'll have it forever so I could do more garlands whenever I need to stop thank you she wants to just blow them with her mouth everywhere and tone is just a child playing with balloons so yeah I'm gonna start by blowing up all my balloons and then we will put the arch together okay guys so for the garland again pretty simple I was really nervous about it, but it really is a very, very simple. This was probably the hardest part or the one that took the longest was just um, blowing up all the balloons. Definitely recommend getting a pump, an electric pump. They're very inexpensive. I think this was it's normally $24, but it was on sale that day. So I got it for about 20 bucks and it was well worth it because it made this process super, super simple. Okay, this is what the balloon tapes looks like. You see it there? There you go, it's holes. So all you do is put the balloons through the holes. Oh, it's not so bad. This is the tape that came with these balloons. So you pretty much do it. Um, the beautiful thing about the internet is some of my followers told me that they, they've been helping me and giving me tips. Um, she said that she left a hole between each because if not, they were too tight. And then once it was up, she would just fill them up with little balloons. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay guys, so I'm sorry if I didn't record sooner. I definitely was just rushing around, but all you wanna do is loop the balloon end through the holes and pretty much just do that all the way through. Um, and I just made sure that I was just grabbing different colors and not repeating the same color over and over. Okay, now I'm gonna make these clusters with one of those long looking balloons. Um, I saw this girl online doing them, so she puts like different balloons, like smaller and bigger ones um, in like little clusters and then she puts them on the wreath wherever she thinks she needs them. Um, so I'm trying it out, you guys, I'm trying it out. I don't really know what she does. I think she attaches two of them together and then puts them on here. I truthfully don't know what she did. I know she attached two of these together, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to attach two together, boom, and then I think you attach it to then the other cluster. Okay, so this was hard to explain, but all I did was tie two balloons together and then the third one I tied to the long balloon and then I just tied all three together and then you do the same thing on the other end. Okay, you guys, so here's a cluster each end you like use each end um so then i could just pretty much put it wherever i want on the garland let me show you okay so here's how you add the clusters you just stretch it out and put it wherever you want but these little clusters make your garland look so much more professional and will fill in any holes that, that you could see just made this little balloon flower how cute is this so i bought this pack also that has arch strip it has like glow um glue dots it has this little flower thing so i'm going to show you and then these to help you tie the balloon but this is what they look like you pretty much just put the balloon ends through the little holes and then you have a flower how cute right 
Um, so easy. And I think this pack with everything was like $8. So these are part of the goodie bags. Here we go, goodie bags, tumblers, and then I'll show you what else we have in here. Band, little hand sanitizer, this little Barbie glittery mask, and this pom-pom pen, and little bubbles. And then I just threw some Hershey Kisses and Starburst. So here is the wreath, this is the front of it. And I am going to put it here. So I just put two command hooks here and there. And we're gonna hang them with fishing line. So again, thanks to all my followers that helped me out with this. Um, everybody said to use command hooks and fish line or the people that do this professionally said to use that. And that's what I did. I just tied um, part of the fish line to a big balloon, around a big balloon, and then the other end to the command hook and then tone helped me get them up here just so i could see exactly where i wanted them to be um it held up the whole time and you couldn't see anything because the fish line is clear so once you have your garland up then you could go ahead and add your clusters to wherever you want them to go again super simple and if you have any balloons that are kind of like falling down or not attaching to each other very good then you could use the glue dots to make sure they stay together I completely forgot to film this, but um, I did one arch there and one down here. And now I'm gonna add little ones to kind of like make it nicer. And we're gonna put like one of those curtains there. I'll show you. We are dipping pretzels in chocolate. Hi. Hi, <laughs> and we also did wafers. I forgot to film, but these are just strawberry wafers. Dip them, put sprinkles. Super cute. Christine is helping. Say hello. And we got wafers, candy wafers, and you just put them in microwave, melt them, and dip whatever you want. Got these from Hobby Lobby. Oh, you guys saw the whole. And then just sprinkles. Okay guys, so I definitely recommend doing this. Everybody loved them and they made my little dessert table, which you'll see at the end, super cute. Um, the wafers, the chocolate wafers were $2.99 a bag. I used three of them and then the pretzel rods and the wafers were super inexpensive. Um, and so were the sprinkles and it's just super easy to do. You um, melt the chocolate in the microwave in defrost settings for intervals of 30 seconds and then you could dip whatever you want and decorate it however it dries super easy and super quick and we love the way they turned out you guys we're all done how pretty do these look and i already put away all the wafers well, me and p are gonna watch a movie but here's another birthday little um idea that i got um these are chocolate covers as wrappers as you see you get these on etsy they were four dollars i'll link the etsy shop i use uh, you could customize it with whatever you want it to say and then you pretty much all i did was take it to staples and they printed it out in this glossy paper for me and all i have to do is cut it out and then you could wrap it around um, hershey bars i was trying to look for the hershey bars that have the aluminum foil couldn't find them but uh let me show you an example of one with these regular ones it looks pretty fine but if you want to you could also wrap the bar with aluminum foil sheets um I don't think it's necessary, but if you want to, you can. Okay, so here's what it looks like with the regular wrapper of the Hershey bar. I don't think it looks bad. I think it's perfect and it works out um, and then it's less time. Okay, so I think these are another great touch to a party and super inexpensive. Um, you don't even have to go to Staples to get this printed out. You could print them out in regular paper at home or get um, some shiny paper and print them at home if you have a printer. And I only paid $4 for the printout on Etsy and you could customize it however you want. And the bars were six in a pack uh, for about $5. Okay, so this was a last minute idea, but I figured I could use these as a little centerpiece to hold my silverware or just to add a little something to the table. So this is where I put my silverware and all I did is I grabbed these glass containers from the dollar store. I grabbed four of them. They have so many different shapes. You could pick whatever you want. And then I used my rhinestone tape. I just uh, put some hot glue on each end, went around the whole glass and that is pretty much it. Um, if you don't have this tape at home, they have it at the dollar 
toddler store so again super inexpensive and easy to do and it just gives a little something to your silverware or you could use it for centerpieces or you could put even your pretzels in here just very cute inexpensive idea okay so two more tips to step up your decor game use fish line for any banners or any little flags or decor that you have because it looks so much cleaner than seeing the rope and then here is a little trick to make your napkins look super pretty um, I decorated my table with these you'll see later on um, but it's just super simple to do and that is it you guys this is everything that I did for Penelope's party here is a close-up of how everything turned out I absolutely love the way everything turned out I am so proud of myself this was my first time doing a garland a balloon garland and now i'm so happy that i'll be able to do them for the rest of her life for any party she has again super inexpensive i'm gonna go ahead and link the balloons that i use the pump everything down below i'm also gonna link the stuff that my friend made in case you guys need anything um she made also these penelope banners and the happy birthday banner but I absolutely love the way it turned out. This runner was also from Amazon and I linked it down below. And here you could see the silverware in my holders and how the napkins looked. And then here I just wanted to show you how our candy or sweets table turned out. So cute. I absolutely love the way it turned out. If you are in the Lehigh Valley area, I'm going to link the girl that did the cake, the cupcakes, and the girl that did the cookies. And everything else are just things that I either made or things that I purchased at the store. I just try to stick to all the pink stuff. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you guys on my next video.